Hortman moves that the rules of the House be so far suspended so that House File Number 3030 be recalled from the Committee on Rules and Legislative Administration, be given its second and third readings, and be placed upon its final passage. Recognize the member from Hennepin, Representative Hortman, to your motion. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I request a roll call. Roll call has been requested. Seeing 15 hands, there will be a roll call. Representative Hortman. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It is deadline day. It is the day before the Easter Passover break, and this body has not had one single formal, real hearing on any proposal to address the issue of sexual harassment at the state capitol. We have a committee that's a subcommittee of the Rules Committee. We have had informational hearings. We have had a lot of conversation. Today's deadline day, though, and nothing has been heard for real in the Rules Committee. There has been no vote on any proposal. There has been no informational hearing on any Republican proposal to do anything about the issue of sexual harassment at the Capitol. So, Mr. Speaker, since we are clearly not able to do this work in a timely fashion, it is time to call upon outside experts to assist us. House File 3030 would create a task force appointed two members by each of the legis four legislative leaders. Those individuals are experts in their field and would help us come up with a proposal so that people who come to the Capitol every day to work would have a forum within which they could make a complaint if they feel that they're in a hostile work environment due to sexual harassment. We have a clear policy in the House of Representatives. We have clear resource for members and for staff. We had training. That was helpful. We still have a very large number of people who come to this building every day and just want to do their jobs. They still have no recourse. Mr. Speaker, members, I hope that you will vote to suspend the rules to immediately consider House File 3030. On the motion to suspend the rules, and as a reminder, uh, this would be a motion to suspend the rules to take up House File 3030 for debate on that House file. But this is a motion to suspend the rules. Discussion on that motion, Representative Pepin. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. I would encourage members to vote against the motion to suspend the rules for a number of reasons. First of all, I laid out very clearly in my subcommittee on workplace safety and respect that we would be taking hours and hours of testimony from experts, which we have. I think we've had something like six meetings in the last week where we have worked with the minority leader to bring in experts that she chose on that are employment law experts. We brought them before the committee. We've gotten ideas from them. We've had our own house research come forward with, with proposals and understanding what our current proposals are. We have uh, listened to public testimony. We've made open up morning hearings, evening hearings to public testimony. We've encouraged all members to bring forward their proposals before the subcommittee so that we could have a good debate on it, so that we could put together a comprehensive, bipartisan proposal to address this issue. And I'm extremely disappointed with you, Representative Hortman, because I've told you that I would like to work with you on this issue. And I mentioned in the last hearing that we had this week that we will be compiling the information that we received in the last several weeks to put forward a work, to hopefully work together on a proposal that can really improve our workplace here and address some of these issues. I will say that the proposals that have come forward so far have been from Representative Lesh and O'Neill on ethics. We looked at that. And then we um, heard a couple of proposals on a task force and a council. Both of those proposals, and the proposal here is the task force, and I'll just comment on that a little bit. It was extremely disappointing and frankly a little embarrassing when I had Representative Hortman come forward and Representative May Quaid, and they were not able to answer some very basic questions that I had. And basically when I said, well, you, you don't have the responses for these questions, some of those questions that need to be answered are whether or not these, these meetings would be open to the public, whether there'd be transparency, who would decide whether they're open to the public, who would decide when the privacy issues of the individual come before transparency issues. The answers that I received were, well, we'd work on that. Well, we'll think about that. Well, that's exactly what we're doing in the committee so that we can put together a comprehensive policy. The other thing we talked about is the media. Who would be the spokesperson for the media? Would it be, would we decide who the chairperson was and that person would talk to the media? Would that, would that group decide what private information that a accuser and an accused had brought forward? 
Who would make that decision? None of these questions were answered in either, of the, either the task force or the council that came forward in another proposal. Now, I understand, Representative Hortman, that you, you talked about this being a, not a serious proposal, and I'll do my homework on it if we actually are going to move forward with it. But that is not how we should be addressing this issue. This is a serious issue, and this shouldn't just be a slipshod proposal where we're going to have an outside group who, frankly, if you think about it, members, what happens if this outside group of experts that the partisans here, yes, the minority leader, the speaker, the partisans appoint their own partisan people to be on this task force, and then what happens when they decide on recommendations for the internal functioning of the House uh, offices and the Senate offices. What happens? How do we implement those? Well, guess what? We have to come bring them back here and we have to vote on them. So let's just skip the middleman and let's deal with the task that we were elected to deal with. We need to take responsibility for the actions of the House of Representatives. That's why we were elected. That's what we were called to do. And I know that the members on my side in the task force and my caucus is planning on addressing this task force or this subcommittee seriously. We're looking at these issues and we intend to put together a bipartisan proposal. If you don't want to do a bipartisan proposal to address some of these issues and see how we can fix and improve some of our house rules and some of our policies and maybe even some of our statutes, then we will go forward on our own. I would hope since this is not a partisan issue in any way from my perspective, I would hope that we would decide as a body not to make this a partisan issue and to make this a more respectful and a safer workplace. And I would ask you, if your leader does not want to work with me and our caucus on this, I would ask that you would work with us because I think we can, we can be leaders for the state and we can put together some real solutions on this. But it's not going to work by suspending the rules on Holy Thursday and voting on a task force and thinking that somehow if we pass a bill on a task force that somehow that's going to solve the problem that we have in the state, that is ridiculous. So members today, I hope that you will shut down this proposal to shut down, to suspend the rules, vote against this proposal and we're going to roll up our hands or roll up our sleeves and we're going to compile the information we have. And whoever wants to work with me in my caucus, I encourage you to contact me because we want to put together some things that's, that are going to make this a better workplace. So with that, I ask for a no to this vote. Further discussion on the motion to suspend the rules. The member from Ramsey, Representative Mahoney. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. So we're going to think about it. Members on this floor and our staff have an avenue to complain. They have anonymity when they do bring forth an accusation. We have a department, an HR department, that deals with it. But the contractors that work here don't. And what we're talking about here today is how we protect people. That's not a partisan issue. How do we protect people? People who don't have the ability to raise their voice because of retribution. And we've seen it here. Each and every one of us, whether it's what's said on this floor, what's done in a committee, what's done in a private office, we've all seen retribution in one form or another. But sexual harassment is disgusting. I don't think there's one person on this floor that thinks that way. We've spent, was it four weeks, six weeks? And I'm a pretty astute member, and I've heard nothing about this task force or any movement on this particular issue. I speak today as a longtime member here, as a longtime member who has heard the stories from the women in my life of what they've had to endure. I'm, I'm taken back to the time just a few weeks ago when the electrician asked to address the judge in Michigan. Just give me five minutes with that guy. Just give me three minutes with that guy. Just give me a minute with that guy. 
After the stories I heard from people that I love, I'd settle for 30 seconds with any of those people. And there's no reason, no reason that a female contractor in this building, in this complex, should have to suffer that. We don't allow that in any of the departments, whether it's DNR, DEED, Health and Human Services. We have programs, and we move pretty quickly on those programs to set those up and put them into place so our employees have a place to vent without fear of retribution. The people who work in this building should also have that particular avenue. All human beings should have that avenue. It's not a partisan issue. We need to move forward. We need to move forward and create a place where all humans feel safe enough to voice what's happened to them. And today, we don't have that. And all I've heard so far is, we'll think about it, we'll figure it out. I'm asking you to vote for this motion because people need to be assured that they can come to work and not feel fear and not fear retribution when they speak the truth. Members, I ask you to vote for this particular motion. Further discussion on the motion to suspend the rules. The member from Ramsey, Representative Fisher. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I also rise in favor of us suspending the rules. We don't have an environment right now that is always safe for anyone who comes here, whether they're a contractor, and even internally, while we have some procedures, they could use work. I think the appropriate way is to take a look at the task force. The idea was put out earlier and is supported by many other areas. And part of the reason we need this is because we've got a very unusual situation in terms of power dynamics here. We've had some great, we had some good training earlier in session, but I know that's one of the things that we're looking for more on. We need more to be done in that area. And I know that there was a letter sent looking for that. I also need that in terms of looking for the uh, outside task force is we've got very unique roles. We've got, as mentioned by some, is we've got outside contractors. We've even got some people from the public who come through. And when they come here and they don't feel safe and they don't feel a way to express that or who to go to, we have a serious problem. Um, I first was exposed to uh, sexual harassment in the workplace back when I was, back in 79 when I was 20, when a number of women came to me in, in the job that I was at saying that they did not feel safe and we had to raise that up and address it. At that time, it was a very different era. At that time, it was pretty common that everybody involved was fired in that type of situation. The women eventually won out in the end, but one of the things I found through my training over the years, I've ended up in human resources quite often, is that many times when you don't have a good process and a power imbalance, a lot of hurt and damage gets done, and the people who've experienced and have been belittled and have lost their dignity in the process have not had a great way to be able to respond, and many times they've been demonized. And because we've got a power dynamic here that is very unusual, and in the other situations, there was always a power imbalance, but there was a way to kind of correct it. We're in an unusual situation where that does not really exist here. In some ways, we hold the ultimate power, and I think one of the things that we have to do to address it, because it is so unusual and unique, is that we have to have some exp experts from the outside to come in and help work with us through this process. It is critical. I would ask for your support on this. Thank you. The member from St. Louis, Representative Schultz, to the motion. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I urge members to vote yes to suspend the rules. I serve on the subcommittee for workplace safety and respect, and I've heard from many, many experts, and I believe that if this is the solution, part of the solution is to create an outside task force We've heard that from many experts that have come to our committee to testify. Um, I think that this task force needs to convene sooner rather than later because people do not feel safe here. And we've heard, seen that this week. We need to make sure we have a safe 
work environment so people can do their work. And this task force can investigate things that we've learned about because it will take time for the task force to come up with recommendations to change our, work, our policies, to possibly have an anonymous tip line, to have a survey of the climate here at the Capitol, a survey of individual members, lobbyists, staff. So there's a lot that this task force could do, so I think we, it is smart for us to suspend the rules so we can create this task force, so we can start on the road down to making this a safe work environment. We're all smart. When we suspend the rules, we can take up the bill, we can amend the bill, we can make it the best bill you've ever passed in this chamber. And it should be bipartisan. I don't think there is a downside to creating this task force. I don't see any harm that's done to do this. So I urge members to vote yes to suspend the rules so we can learn about the bill and possibly improve it. Thank you. The member from St. Louis, Representative Sandsteed. Members, I also rise to ask for your support in this. I, I don't understand how this task force is time bound. And with the situations that we're facing, it needs to be time bound. There are people who feel threatened and maybe even less worth the same, intimidated, harassed, bullied. And that gets in the way of us doing our work here. This is not about gender. But without having this work done in a timely fashion, those factors impact the work we do. And the work we do here is time bound. And we are working on behalf of all of Minnesota. We need to ensure that we can come to a place where we feel safe and secure, and we cannot kick this can down the road any longer, and I ask for your support. The member from Anoka, Representative Bernardi. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. I too rise in support of suspending the rules. People in this House and in our legislature whether they're members, their staff, have even heard constituents. Right now, as we're doing our work throughout this session, have felt fear, have felt uncomfortable, and do not have a safe working environment yet. We're on our second committee deadline today. I think it's very appropriate we take action to suspend the rules and get this task force moved forward. One of the things I think we all can agree on in a value we have in our state, whether on this side of the aisle or that side of the aisle, whether in urban, suburban, greater Minnesota, we want people to feel safe and actually to be safe. We haven't made that happen here yet, and it needs to happen quickly. In fact, I want, um, there's one thing that, now I'm losing track of my mind here, but, um, so just give me a second, because this is very personal, because we're not only feeling this in our workplaces, but people across Minnesota are feeling this, whether it's been in our families, happened to ourselves, our neighbors, our community members, our constituents that we represent. But we can't allow people to live in fear, and it's happening currently, and it's happening right now. And I did get my thought back here. We had a training, and so, what I've experienced as a legislator is training with other members and what we got out of that training so far, and it really needs a follow-up training fast. We got training for a number of, I don't know, remember how many hours in it, and about what I recall, about th two-thirds of the way through, then we get this study popped up on the PowerPoint about the effectiveness of flirting in the workplace. 
and the three different things why it makes it helpful and creates a good environment for people to flirt in the workplace. I just thought, throw my hands up. We now have been taught about respecting one another and what sexual harassment is, and flirting is a sexual type conversation. And now it's being promoted as, and letting us know that that makes a better work environment if people flirt. That's how I heard it. I don't know how all of you heard it. And people who have been sexually harassed in this workplace have not been respected. The training was almost another victimization because it really marginalized people who have experienced this. And so I rise today. We need to take immediate action. We need to move this forward. And we need to get solutions now so that our colleagues, people who come to the Capitol here, can feel safe and not fearful. Thank you. The member from Ramsey, Representative Murphy E. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker and members and Representative Pepin. Um, I am grateful for the work that you've been doing in uh, the work group and I was glad to be before you uh, to talk about um, this issue uh, a couple of weeks ago. Um, I think if we're honest with each other um, in this body, we know sometimes some of the toughest issues that we face get sent to uh, working groups um, and there they, or task forces, um, but subsets of us, sometimes the rules committee. Um, where they are parked and not really dealt with. I, th I think if we're really honest with each other in this body, we know that that happens. We just talked about that with the Sunday, Sunday liquor sales bill and you know, making a commitment to putting some of the money from that into chemical dependency treatment. It hasn't happened yet. So we do have that habit, and this is um, a tough issue. And I think embedded in it are some really difficult questions for us about whether or not we should be self-policing um, uh, claims and adjudicating those uh, within this body. Um, how do we protect the interests of people who are accused? How do we protect the interests of those who have been harassed, the victims, the survivors? And when should that information be made public uh, for the voters and through the press? I think those are really hard questions and they are going to take some work. Um, and I understand having been before um, the workplace on the Workplace Committee on Respect that uh, those questions are being asked. But what I hear outside of this room, outside of this body in the halls of the Capitol is um, the attention to this issue has really gone away. That already people who spend their time in the Capitol and pay attention to the work that we do believe that this body isn't really going to deal with this issue. That it has been set aside, sent away uh, to be dealt with uh, or maybe not dealt with at all. That we'll just stick with the status quo. and. When I think about my love for this institution, this beloved institution, um, that can't be our answer. That can't be our answer. We can't take this issue like we take so many other issues as politics as usual. Um, it's too important for us. It's too important for our members. It's too important for the people who come here as citizens, as lobbyists, the people who work here. And so I do think it is important for us to suspend the rules and take up the issue, to convey to the public to convey to them and to give them confidence that we are taking this issue seriously, um, that we're not going to let the session end without taking it up and finding a remedy, embedding some ex expertise so that we are able to assure the public and one another that this is a place where people can come and do their work and do it with integrity and safely. And so I too stand in support of suspending the rules to take up this question um, so that we are being clear with Minnesotans that we understand that we, like so many workplaces, have an issue, and we, like so many Minnesotans, are willing to deal with it. Thank you. The member from Ramsey, Representative Becker Finn. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I would love to not be voting on this today. When this idea originally came forward in November, of 2017, we asked leaders of both parties to step forward and put this task force together in a bipartisan, nonpartisan way. It's now the end of March. It doesn't, it didn't work. And I continue to have people reaching out to me asking me what else can be done. 
I don't actually have a lot of power in this body. I'm a freshman in the minority, but I have the power to talk about this right now. And that is why we are doing this today, because otherwise we aren't going to have the conversations. And I've, I've watched the, the testimony taken in the subcommittee, and it's been powerful testimony and very helpful testimony from experts. And it's the, exactly the kind of thing that could be happening in a task force. We could have already had solutions put forward by the task force and heard in committee so that the public can come forward and tell you how important this is to them. But we haven't. Because I don't control what bills we hear in the committees. None of us on this side of the aisle do. So unfortunately, we have to use this partisan process to do this. And I wanted to talk a little bit about what happens in the absence of any plan and in the absence of any policies or protocol. In the absence of any actual procedure set in place for members of the public, for lobbyists, for department staff, for everybody that comes to this building. And let's be clear, some of the lobbyists we deal with are citizen lobbyists. There are, there are constituents. And they choose to spend time here because they're passionate about their kid with special needs or they're passionate about disability funding or atrocities that are happening in some other country. And those people matter too. And right now, in the absence of policies, they send me text messages. And they come meet with me. And they email me and they send me messages through every medium that's available on my phone because they don't know what else to do. Clearly sending me a text message isn't gonna solve the problem, but in the absence of nothing set uh, out for the public to do, that's what happens. What happens is they unload those stories on people like me because they know that I will listen to them and believe them and fight for them. So all those women who have called me, texted me, messaged me, shared those stories about one of the worst days of your life, this is us fighting for you. This isn't about any one individual or one incident. This is about making this building safe. A yes vote here is a yes for all the women who have victim, been victimized in these buildings likely while some of us were in committee or in our offices and in these buildings, terrible things have happened to your constituents, to people that we work with every day. So we can make this a nonpartisan vote by everybody voting to support this. Each one of you has the power to make that decision for yourself. Members, I urge a yes vote. Enough. Let's move forward. Let's help people. Vote yes. Thank you. The member from Hennepin, Representative Joachim. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise in support of suspending the rules as well. Um, today I got an email from a constituent asking me when we were going to make it safe again for her to come here and advocate and raise her voice as her right is to do so. I'm sure I'm not the only one in this body that has gotten one of those emails. I know this isn't a partisan issue. I know it isn't. And I did hear Leader Pepin say she's disappointed that rep our Minority Leader Hortman is not working with her. Well, I'm disappointed at that polarizing comment because that's all it does is polarize us and divides us. This is an issue, this is a workplace that we all need to make sure is safe for people. And I guess some of us are just tired of waiting. We've played by the rules. We've done the steps, we've dotted the I's, we've crossed the T's, we've put in bills. It's second deadline. How much longer are we gonna have to wait? How much longer do we have to tell our constituents, oh, don't worry, I'm sure we'll take care of it. It'll happen. I know democracy works slow. 
Sometimes there's good reasons for that. Working slow on this issue, there is no good reason for that. Please vote to suspend the rules. The member from Dakota, Representative May Quaid. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Members, on my desk, I have Childhood Hunger Caucus pledge cards. And I bring that up because I started the Childhood Hunger Caucus a month ago, and I had a bill hearing on Childhood Hunger Caucus. It's been 129 days since I asked for this task force. 129 days that experts could have gotten together, made recommendations to this body to vote on. Members, we know the truth belongs in every room, and the truth is, if somebody who does not work and is employed at this legislature was harassed today, the policy has not changed. Nothing has changed for those people. I have no patience for injustice. That is not okay. We've admired the problem of sexual harassment. That's not enough. We've created a token subcommittee that has yet to hold a single vote. That is not enough. We have had a com comically impotent, though mandatory, training on harassment, and that is not enough. We are elected representatives of our communities, and we should serve as an example for our entire state. We need to lead our constituents. I have been stopped in the most random places throughout this state asking about this task force. A gas station in Heron Lake, the Tobys in Hinckley, Edina, Eden Prairie, the Iron Range. People ask me about this, they don't even know who I am, but they know that this is something that I have asked for, and they support it. These are all of our constituents. So as your colleague, I'm asking you to vote yes in support of the suspension of the rules. But as a Minnesotan, as a Minnesotan, I'm asking you to vote yes because we have to do this for every single person whose life touches this capital that does not have the power and protection of an election certificate. That is why we must vote yes to suspend the rules. So colleagues, I implore you to vote yes. We must take action. We must get our house in order. The member from Hennepin, Representative Hortman. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I am happy to work in a bipartisan manner. This is deadline day. This is the day bills are supposed to have moved by if we're actually serious about them. I just implore the majority leader to schedule a real hearing in a real committee where a bill is properly before the body and can be voted on. I know the difference between a dog and pony show and a real hearing. And it's time to quit having the dog and pony show and quit giving lip service to this issue and provide a meaningful opportunity for people to be heard on this issue. The rules committee is the committee that has possession of bills and that can take action. And I think it is well past time to schedule a bill for a real hearing in the rules committee. That hasn't been done. If that had been done, we would not be at this moment on the House floor right now. Members, I hope you'll vote yes. Seeing no further discussion, the clerk will take the roll on the motion. Clerk will close the roll. There being 48 ayes and 69 nays, the motion does not prevail and the rules are not suspended.